What we have to come to understand is that your brain must make you do it in the right way and then everything is fine. But what's that? What is the right way? How is there, in fact, a right way that our brains could make us do the things that we do so that we were responsible for them? Um, for instance, does it require indeterminism? Well, tradition <coughs> says yes. Um, tradition runs like this. Uh, people think, I can't be responsible without <coughs> free will. That's as it were by definition. And I can't have free will if my decisions are all physically determined. That's also, it seems by definition, but curiously enough, a definition of a different meaning of free will. <coughs> But here's the problem. If people don't believe they have free will, they will tend to conclude that responsibility is a myth, and then they'll start behaving badly. That's the worry. That if people lose their sense, if people get the idea that moral responsibility is just a myth and that science is exploding that myth, then the worry would be, well, maybe then they'll, they'll stop trying to lead moral lives. They will not take their own morality seriously anymore. Well, one might think, well, that's a sort of, only a philosopher would really worry about that. But no, there's actually some evidence that this is the case. So you're saying the free will part of the brain is exempt from the natural laws of physics? Obviously, otherwise we couldn't blame people for anything they do. Do you think the free will part of the brain is attached or does it just float nearby? <laughs> Shut up. <laughs> now that actually captures the core problem very well. Especially the last one. Eh? Because people just won't shut up. I will give you a few examples. Here's Paul Singer, eminent German neuroscientist. No one is responsible for their actions since all is predetermined by the brain. Here's Chris Frith, a British neuroscientist. Is it possible to predict people's actions on the basis of neural activity that precedes their conscious decisions? If so, then free will is an illusion. A recent <coughs> article makes this interesting. Point. Recently, I attended a lecture by an eminent neuropsychologist, that would be Patrick Haggard, who declared that neuroscientists have to believe that conscious intention is an illusion. So those, this is the idea that's out there in the zeitgeist from some very eminent and uh, influential uh, uh, scientists who are not shy about talking to the general public. There's a more important and troubling issue, which is how to undo the misunderstandings of the implications from neuroscience for human responsibility. Now, even though uh, determinism is a red herring, I have to I can't expect you just to take my word for that since it's a 2,000 year tradition. More than that, probably. So I'm going to say a little bit about that. So here's the outline of the rest of my talk. I'm going to first spend a little time supporting the idea that indeterminism is a red herring. Then I'm going to look at the question does neuroscience show that we don't have conscious free will? And then I'm going to look more constructively at what would give us the free will that we want to see whether we have it or not. A very simple example which could be expanded. We are all sophisticated. So if we don't read the fine print on a contract, it's our fault. But there are a lot of unsophisticated people that don't know enough to read the fine print. And so laws have been made to, to in effect, protect them and to, and to punish those that exploit uh, uh, deceptive contracts. But also, once those laws are in place, then the law puts the responsibility back onto the, onto the buyer, and then it's caveat emptor. Back and forth we go with, with uh, uh, <coughs> arms race. And the same thing is happening is going to happen to the law. So here are my conclusions. Determinism is a red herring. Neuroscience has honest implications only for closet Cartesians. Mr. Puppet is a defective intuition pump. And there is a consequentialist compatibilist justification of the justice response. 